Chapter 3. My Reaction to the Announcement When it was announced that church nominations were now open to women as well as men, I immediately spoke to Brian, one of the elders, saying that I believed it was wrong to appoint a woman as an elder, as it was contrary to scripture. I felt compelled to address this matter as it was introducing a controversy in the church that was against the word of God. I straight away wrote this letter to the elders at Walsaf's church. Dear Secretary and Elders, It was announced today that the eldership were in unanimous agreement that women could be ordained as elders as well as men, and nominations were being taken from the church to appoint new elders. I groaned immediately, as I felt very sad that a controversial issue was being introduced into the church. I spoke to Brian and the other elder, two of the other elders were away, saying I believed that the elders were wrong and in a serious error in this point, and I believed it was my duty to say to them. I stated that I did not like controversy and would avoid it, but this matter was thrust upon the church. I said that unanimity did not make the matter right at all. The disciples of Jesus were unanimous when they forsook him, but that didn't make it right. I commended them for standing against making practicing homosexual elders, but I could not do the same about this issue. The secretary said they had looked into the issue, and that was their viewpoint, and I should be subject to their authority. I said I was not arguing about their authority, but I was under authority to Jesus, and I felt my responsibility to say to them how I felt and believed. I stated that I did not have to believe what they believed. I asked them, what did they think I should do about this issue, which has been raised by them and not me? My immediate thoughts call to mind the Apostle's exhortation to Titus, which was this, to ordain elders in every city. Titus 1 verse 5. He says, if any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, etc., holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he might be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince gainsayers. The elders to be men, not women. 1 Timothy 5.1, Paul states that an elder should not be rebuked, but entreated as a father, and younger men as brethren. The next verse states that elder women should be treated as mothers, and younger as sisters. In these two verses, an elder is a male, and there is no suggestion of an elder as a woman. I understand the Hebrew word elder is zakwin, meaning aged or bearded, which means of male, of course. Genesis 50 verse 7. The Hebrew word for elder woman is gadol, meaning great, as in Genesis 29 verse 16. Paul writes to Timothy, 1 Timothy 3 verse 1, saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. The word bishop is similar to an overseer and used in Acts 20 verse 28. In this place it states that the Holy Ghost made them overseers. These were men, not women, Acts 21 verse 5. It says that wives and children came to kneel down as they parted. Paul states, 1 Timothy 3 verse 2, that a bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife, one that rules his own house well, his children in subjection, if a man knows not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Here we are to understand the bishop or overseer is a man and not a woman. The apostle does make distinctions between men and women and argues his point from scripture. Men to pray, women to adorn themselves. 1 Timothy 3 verse 8. He says, I will that men pray everywhere, lifting up, holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety. Adam was first formed, then Eve. Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. I do not wish to be controversial, but I believe the clear light of scripture should direct us and we should not be wiser than what is written. Obedience to God's word is better than sacrifice. Remember what happened to King Saul. I believe it is against the word of God to ordain women as elders. Yours sincerely, 
In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, David Clark. And Lessons from Scripture My thoughts on reflection about this matter were that I had learned the gospel truths from reading the scriptures very early on within a few months after my conversion from crime to Christ. I have written about my conversion and experience in my book Converted on LSD Trip also, be it in strict of particular Baptist and Borstal Boys. I was shocked that these men, these elders, wished to contradict and go against the scripture. A letter of reply. I received a reply to my letter from Martin Lloyd, which is as follows, and I would like you to read it carefully, as it is important for you to see where he is going wrong. Dear David, thank you for sharing with Brian and myself your concern about the possibility of our fellowship having female elders, and for the letter you gave me Sunday evening concerning the same subject. I should perhaps point out that it is not a new view and there is within the fellowship a number of female elders and has been for a number of years. They are, at this point, none serving but still elders. I hope you will agree that what we are talking about is in fact a matter of interpretation of scripture. Within the eldership of Warsash we hold different views on some doctrine. We believe that God has called us as elders and therefore accept by his grace one another's view while possibly not agreeing with it. Which of us is right and which of us is wrong is not important. What is important is that we love and serve our Lord Jesus Christ to the best of our ability. I believe at Warsash that is what the elders are doing. We have in the past been sidetracked on different issues which have been raised by various circumstances. These issues have, in my opinion, at best, slowed down our progress as a church and, at worst, prevented us doing what God has called us to do. I agree that doctrine and interpretation of the Holy Scriptures is important, but if it slows us down or stops us reaching out, which is what we believe our Lord is calling us to do, then it cannot be right. If our doctrine prevents us from working with other Christians, then we must throw it away and reconsider it. Doctrine has evolved over the years, and praise God, will continue to do so. No one has a pure doctrine, and no one is perfect, only Jesus. Be assured that we will continue to pray over this and many other issues, and we thank you again for expressing your opinions and belief. Thank God that he's given us a fellowship in which we are able to do this openly. Yours sincerely, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Martin Lloyd. My second letter to the elders. At first sight, the response of Martin Lloyd might seem very reasonable and a kind, considerate letter. But that is not the case. And I felt it was important to respond with reason and scripture to this reply. So here is my letter of response. 28th of January 1999. Dear Secretary and Elders, thank you for your reply to my letter regarding women elders. I do not agree with you that the possibility of an appointment of a woman elder at the church is a question of interpretation of scripture. I have declared to you what the scriptures actually say about the appointment of elders. I've not made any interpretation of the scripture, but taken it at its literal straightforward sense. The scripture is clear that men were to be appointed elders in the church and not women. We have no example of a woman being appointed as an elder in the New Testament church. I have said, I believe it is a serious error to depart from the scripture revelation in this matter. You say that you agree doctrine and interpretation of scripture is important, but if it slows us down or stops us reaching out, then it can't be right. I believe this also is an error, because the scripture says in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for reproof, correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, 
truly furnished unto all good works. On this basis, I put to you that Scripture teaches we should keep the commandments of God and not rush ahead because we want to make haste. This was the error of King Saul. Scripture teaches clearly, 1 Samuel 13, 12. King Saul rushed ahead of God and did not want to be slowed down and made his own burnt offerings and supplications without waiting for the appointed priest of God. He felt he could not wait for Samuel. Verse 13, Samuel said to him, You have done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commands of the Lord. We are also instructed by Scripture to lay hands on no man suddenly. 1 Timothy 5.22 This is in the chapter where Paul instructs Timothy in the appointment of elders. I use the scripture here in both places lawfully to correct an error. I believe it also another error to teach that doctrine of scripture is progressive. The scripture is clear. Jude 3. The faith was once delivered unto the saints. This is not a progression, but a revelation to the church now contained in the scriptures. I grant that we grow in the knowledge of God's grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and so the doctrine of Christ. This is progressive, but the doctrine of the gospel was delivered once unto the saints. There can be no new revelation about elders to the church. The doctrine of elders is contained in the scriptures alone, not in the new revelation to the church. I feel and sense that God is about to try or prove the church over this issue as he indicates he will do. I am responding as I'm instructed to, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 to 21, to prove all things, to abstain from all appearance of evil. The scripture teaches in Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 3, thou shalt not hearken to the voice of the prophet or that dream of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. I believe, I've done as I'm called of God to do, to speak as I have so learned Christ. I have no desire to be involved in a contention or arguments. I would exhort you as I would a father and a brother to hear what I say because I believe I speak the words of our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity and in truth. Yours in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, David Clark, 28th of January 1999.